and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist with an interest in all things anti-aging. And today we're going to hear from a very well-qualified expert about a supplement that's been hailed as a major advance in tackling the unwanted effects of aging. You might have heard of NMN, NR or niacin, a group of related supplements that scientists believe boost our levels of NAD, a coenzyme that's present in every cell in our bodies and is essential to our health, energy and longevity. Well, I've been reading up and watching scientists like Dr. David Sinclair talking about this for some months now, and I was pretty keen to try one of these NAD boosters, not only for myself, but also for my mum and dad who are both around 80 and I wanna keep them in good health. So to help me make sense of it all and which supplements to choose, I'm joined today by scientist Dr. Elena Seranova, who is one smart cookie and you're gonna love her. She has a master's in translational neuroscience and a PhD in stem cell biology and autophagy, which is the study of how the body cleans out old cells in order to generate newer, healthier ones. She is also the founder of NMN Bio, a supplier of anti-aging supplements, and she's kindly supplied both me and my mom and dad with three of the supplements she feels are most beneficial for anti-aging, which we're currently trying out and I'll be reporting back on soon. But today we're gonna really dig into what NMN is, why she believes it's the best form for boosting NAD and why she and other scientists believe it could help us turn back the clock on aging and help prevent its worst effects on our bodies alongside a healthy diet and lifestyle. We're also going to talk today about some of the other whole body benefits, including improving the look and health of our skin, supporting hormone function, even our weight, and why the FDA has stopped its sale in the US as a food supplement and what that means. This is part one of a two-part interview. Dr. Elena will be back with us in two weeks' time to walk us through the longevity supplement regime that my mum and dad and I have started on. And I'll be sharing some feedback on that point on whether we've been noticing any differences with them. But for now, sit back and prepare to learn about one of science's most fascinating discoveries when it comes to living better for longer. We're going to talk about a supplement that is very widely discussed at the moment for a number of reasons, and we'll get to that. Um, but I, I'd like to start by just hearing about your own background and how you came to found NMN Bio. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the channel. This is very exciting. And uh, I'd love to share my story and how NMN Bio really uh, was born, because I, I first conceived the idea uh, a couple of years ago while I was still doing my uh, PhD at the University of Birmingham. So uh, my PhD research had to do with aging and to neurodegeneration. And my research kind of led me into studying NAD metabolism. What we saw was that um, most of the metabolites that were uh, significantly perturbed uh, in the cells were actually related to NAD. So it was NAD plus and NADH. And for this reason, we wanted to um, kind of add some mechanistic insights into our work and investigate this further and see how this is related to, um, you know, the, the neurodegenerative phenotype that we're seeing in patients. And for this reason, we said, okay, well, let's treat um, those sick neurons with different NAD boosters and see how they respond. Can I stop you there, Elena, just um, for me and others, because you've got so much knowledge, I'm trying to break it down. So sick neurons, how is that showing up in patients? What does that look like? So for example, in Alzheimer's disease, what we have is aggregation of different proteins that are just floating around in the neuron and they're accumulating and it's basically garbage. So this translates into um, cognitive impairment in the patients. In Parkinson's disease, we have the death of uh, some particular neurons. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not going in. Let's just say that in specific parts of the brain, there is some neurodegeneration going on and increased death of particular or neurons that are then producing the Parkinsonism symptoms, which could be, um, you know, um, handshake, handshake, hand tremors. However, there are a couple of things that um, that we basically see that those neurons have in common. So, for example, their mechanism by which they they're trying to reduce toxic waste within the cell is impaired. So this process is called autophagy, and it has to do with how the cell is clearing itself. So this is usually impaired in most neurons 
neurodegenerative diseases. Moving forward, there is also um, usually a dysfunction in mitochondrial function. So those neurons, uh, most neurons in neurodegenerative diseases, they don't produce enough energy in order to basically maintain all of the metabolic functions um, that, that they need to keep themselves alive and well. And this data will be in our uh, paper in my PhD work that will be published soon, hopefully. So this is currently in revision now. So we're currently very close to uh, to publishing this. So maybe you and I can actually do another episode on this and kind of go in depth. I was treating those neurons with different NAD boosters in the lab. And, you know, I was doing my research. I was already, I already knew about uh, Dr. David Sinclair's research at the yes. time. Yeah. And I actually remember just sitting in the lab and feeding myself and listening to David Singler's audiobook, and he was talking about NAD2. And I'm like, oh wow, this is great. This is this correlates to my own research quite well. Um, and then I realized that there are actually companies that are already selling some NAD boosters that I can purchase commercially for myself. And I said, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm working so many hours. Uh, at that point, I think I was kind of going through a burnout as well, to be honest, because I was working like 16 hours in the lab, 18 hours in the lab. It was crazy. And uh, I said, you know what? I'll, I'll just go on Amazon and purchase some um, some NAD boosters. And I found them and I said, okay, well, let's just try it out and see how it goes. So um, I purchased um, Enamen. And then after a couple of days I realized oh wow like it's uh it's late evening and I'm not tired anymore and I I've always been a supplement enthusiast and I know that in order to feel a difference from a supplement you actually usually need like a few weeks yeah but with and it was it, it was just instant it was like that like two days and that's it and this was very impressive to me as a scientist, because uh, I also knew the background and how it works, and and I I, I kind of understand what's going on within my own cells. Fast forward, um, you know, a month. I'm going back to Amazon, and I want to buy the same supplement, mm -hmm. but the vendor has run out of stock. And I said, okay, well, I'll purchase an amount from this other company. Uh, and a month later, same story. Now this vendor is out of stock, and I said, okay, wait a minute. It looks like there is a lot of demand here, but there is not enough supply. So you know, fast forward a few more months um, into my PhD, I was already wrapping up my work. Uh, we had the pandemic. I was wondering uh, what to do next, and I was always uh, quite entrepreneurial myself so I said you know what like this makes sense because be besides the product market fit uh I I felt like there is a founder market fit as well because I know so much about NAD yeah. metabolism already and I yeah. literally have papers in the pipeline that will be published very soon on NAD metabolism so yeah. this is how an bio got started and we launched the company in December 2020 and ever since it's just been like an astronomical growth like I uh, like I couldn't anticipate something like that to be completely honest with you so I'm very grateful that we already have uh you know thousands of customers we're selling to over 60 countries gosh that's yeah. in such a short period of time and you're so young as well I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be interested to hear about your own your own view on supplements starting so young but let's get yeah. let's get to that later just to get into the basics of really how it's working in our bodies because you've talked about cognitive decline but for those of us and 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 offsetting that, which is really, really important. Um, but we're going to feel day-to-day -day benefits like more energy, according according to your research. How is it actually working on our body for those of us who, you know, hopefully are not experiencing too much cognitive decline at the moment? How is it working? What can we expect from it? So the reason why uh, NMN is such an essential supplement is because it actually boosts the levels of what we call NAD in the body. So NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and this is an essential regulator of human metabolism. It is basically implicated in over 300 functions in the cell. So we call them enzymatic reactions, but let's just say your cell performs a bunch of functions. So uh, in 300 of these functions, NAD uh, is somehow implicated. So it's either needed as a substrate for other proteins to do their job, for example, such as um, what we call sirtuins or PARPs. So those are 
called by some people the uh, longevity genes, they are responsible for DNA repair. So they are responsible for um, epigenetic regulation. And whenever we have, for example, uh, DNA breaks in the cell for one reason or the other, so this could be either um, from uh, exposure to sunlight, or this could be uh, this could be happening just because of aging in, in some instances. Yeah. The sirtuin machinery is the one that is found first on the site of DNA uh, damage. And it's going there in order to repair uh, the damage and also performs other um, other functions within the cell. So basically we have our DNA, which is like a code for what needs to be built. And then you have the epigenetic regulation that decides what, uh, what genes need to be switched on and off in what cells. So very, very important for cellular identity and to make sure that we maintain the function that we need within the body. And for, for, uh, for all of these processes, we basically need um, sirtuins, um, as I previously mentioned, and uh, sirtuins cannot perform their function if there is no NAD in the cell. So NAD acts um, uh, acts as a substrate for the sirtuins to come in and utilize it and do um, all of these processes for us to, uh, to have healthy cells. So do we produce less NAD as we age and therefore by taking it, we're getting more into our cells to boost their productivity. Um, unfortunately, the NAD production in the cell declines with age, such as other uh, processes as well. So um, we peak um, in NAD production at the age of 25, approximately. And it's all a slow decline from there. I'm quite a few years on from that. <laughs> Well, uh, hopefully you will restore some function with our NMN. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. So basically our hormones also peak at the age of 25 and so does our NAD production. And from there, um, usually by the age of 27, 28, people already start experiencing a decline in energy and focus. And so far, I've said this to uh, maybe, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of people and not one person and has told me, you know what, Elena? No, you're wrong. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that either. No, no, not, not a single person because everyone starts experiencing the decline in energy and focus because of the hormonal decline and the NAD decline at this age. So that is the age where you actually need to start being conscious about um, you know, longevity interventions because what you want is to preserve optimal cellular function for decades and decades. And if you start intervention much later, Later, um, you know, there will be probably less function that you will be able to recover. I met someone the other day, a lovely lady, and uh, she asked me, okay, so what do you do? And I said, I have an anti-aging supplement company. And she said, oh, so you're selling supplements for old people. And I said, no, I sell supplements for people that are over 25, because this is when the aging process starts. And, and then she said, oh, okay, <laughs> I didn't realize. So people don't even realize uh, what we mean when we say anti-aging supplements, because it's not about just um you know just the aging it's about maintaining what you have and optimizing and keeping your energy levels and your focus levels um uh, at optimal levels and uh, for that the intervention needs to start in your late 20s early 30s and of course it's not only the supplement that we're talking about because there is no um you know no no magic pill that will do everything for you so it's not enough to just be taking a bunch of supplements and believe me i take like i don't know a lot of them a lot a lot mm -hmm. like maybe 20 supplements a oh day something like that <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, but um, I, I can't not do the other stuff too. So I need to make sure that I'm not having junk food on a regular basis. I need to make sure that I'm exercising, that I have some sort of a sun exposure in the morning and I need to, to be logging in my steps. Oh, I think we should do a whole different conversation on exercise sure. actually, because I just think Absolutely. there's so much I want to ask you about there. Exercise and nutrition. It's absolutely fascinating and very, very exciting to somebody who just, you know, about to turn 50. I've always been conscious of lifestyle um, and, you know, exercising and eating well, but I feel like we've got a lot more focus and um, more specifics around how to do that. Can I just ask you, when you were talking, I can, I can, um, you know, the effects on our body, 
we've we've talked about that. Um, but what about the skin? Do you think we could see some of this in the skin? Yeah, so we absolutely have results from our customers that are taking NMN that have been reporting amazing results with skin. I can also see it for myself. Uh, so NMN has uh, has been clinically shown in a human clinical study to actually activate the collagen production pathway, which I think is very, very exciting because there is a bunch of collagen supplements on the market and some of them are not even uh, being absorbed by your body because they are the wrong molecular weight, but even if they are the right molecular weight, when we consume collagen orally, um, it is broken down into amino acids in our digestive system. And those amino acids may or may not be utilized in order to synthesize new uh, collagen in the body. However, I am not uh, personally taking collagen uh, okay. because I've been taking NMN for quite some time. And honestly, like I'm, I'm looking at my face and my skin, and I think it looks so much better than three years ago. <laughs> Dare I ask, would you mind telling me, sharing your age? I'm actually 65. <laughs> I know, this is what I was waiting for. <laughs> no, I I will be 35 uh, in a few months. Oh gosh, well, I would have put you at 25. <laughs> Thank you. To be honest, yeah. I think that there is a big role that my nutrition plays in this as well, because whenever I consume carbs every once in a blue moon, like I can see some red skins on my on my skin straight away, right? So the effect from from junk food, basically, and we're all humans, right? So I don't yeah. want to pretend that I never eat a burger with fries yeah. and a milk. My um, uh, nutrition is usually high protein, high fat. So it's kind of keto war slash um, keto slash carnivore basically most of the time. However, yeah. as a woman, I do have hormonal fluctuations mm -hmm. and some uh, some days of the month, it's it's harder than not to kind of indulge in in something that is not so healthy. So uh, my usual dinner would be, you know, just a steak with some cheese and so on. And I do two meals a day usually, and I'm doing intermittent fasting. So I only have like a three, four hour uh, fasting window most of the days where I'm consuming food. Uh, and then my, my first meal of the day, my breakfast would also be uh, basically high protein. So it would be eggs with some bacon or uh, something else. However, as I said, as, as women, we do have hormonal fluctuations, and this means that our body has different um, different needs for for different nutrients. Uh, because uh, during our periods, we literally have things like magnesium and other nutrients dipping up to forty percent in our blood. So this wow. is a huge, huge fluctuation. Um, and you know, like, this is why we get all these chocolate cravings and dessert cravings and fries and whatnot, because uh, it's very hard for our bodies to deal with that, um, you know, during those days of the month. Um, so yeah, coming, coming back to the, um, to the skin question, I think it should be a combination of nutrition. And of course, you know, as I said previously, you know, exercise is good for everything, right? And drinking yeah. a ton of this, which I do water. <laughs> Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> can I just ask you about niacin and how NMN compares to niacin? Because the, the, you know what you'll hear is, oh, there's a lot more evidence around niacin. Why is NMN the superior formula in, in your mind? Sure. Uh, NMN is a form of vitamin B3, what we call niacin. This needs to go through several steps within mm. the cell. Mm -hmm. in order to, uh, to eventually boost NAD. But with NMN, NMN is, um, is a direct precursor to NAD, which means that it only needs one step to convert into NAD. And this means that it's super, super efficient in boosting NAD in a short period of time. There is another NAD booster called NR, uh, which we have heard about a lot as yeah. well. And it's also sold as a dietary supplement. And um, what NMN is, it's actually a phosphorylated NR molecule. So uh, NR needs to be phosphorylated first uh, in order to be converted into NMN, and then it can actually boost our NAD levels. And for this reason, uh, out of this two, NMN will always be the most uh, efficient NAD booster. And the way your supplements are made, I mean, NMN is available in powder form, you sell in capsule form. Is, is there a particular reason for that? No, we also sell in powder as well. So we do okay. have powders 
uh, with powder. And there is um, no evidence at the moment that one uh, format is more efficient than the other. The people that take the powder, they usually put it under their tongue. Um, and the argument there is that, you know, it's going to be absorbed in the bloodstream. And maybe this would be the case. But all the studies that we have, they are showing efficacy with just capsules or tablets. Can we talk about the FDA decision to stop NMN being sold in the US as a dietary supplement. So not as far as I'm sure. aware because of any particular risk, but just because they're looking at it for drug approval. So, I mean, yes. what are your thoughts on that? So basically what the FDA decision has told us is that um, they don't agree with NMN being sold as a dietary supplement, mm -hmm. but this is not a ban on NMN um, being sold overall, right? So we ah. need to... Mm -hmm understand this because there are still companies that are selling NMN in the US mm -hmm. and um, you know there, there is tens of listings on Amazon US um, as I checked earlier today <laughs> because uh, I wanted to make sure that this is still the case and yeah. so usually what happens with some supplements is that supplements usually have some claims right and those claims um, may or may not have sufficient uh, back up from, from different uh, trials and so on. And this is where the gray area is, right? So we, so for, um, NMN in particular, we know that it's absolutely safe. It's been shown to be safe in multiple studies up to 1.2 grams a day, which is quite a high dosage. Mm -hmm. And most people take less than that. So they usually take 500 grams, one gram. So far, uh, NMN is not banned from being sold in the US. It's banned from being sold as a dietary supplement, which means that if a new company selling, um, if a new company comes to the US wanting to sell, uh, NMN as a dietary supplement, they cannot do so. However, the current vendors, uh, they actually can still um, sell NMN. And to that, I would like to also add that FDA can only regulate what happened within the United States. Mm -hmm. And this means that companies like NMN Bio, for example, that is based in the UK, has absolutely no interruption in the way we operate because we do ship our supplements from the UK to the US and we continue to do so. And mm -hmm. uh, there is absolutely nothing preventing us from, from doing that at the moment. Now, yes. with regards to, to the uh, clinical trials themselves and what is going on, this is um, it's a bit weird that uh, the FDA had this statement at the moment because um, there is uh, there are still no clinical trials on phase three that are about to get NMN approved as a drug. So that's that's point number one here. And point number two is that we actually had another supplement um, a couple of years ago called NAC and acetylcysteine, which is an amino acid. It's also a natural compound that has been uh, prescribed um, as a drug for a particular use. I'm actually... Um, uh, I'm not sure what what the diagnosis there is. I think it it has to do maybe with some toxicity or poisoning, and there is a particular indication for which this uh, compound is being prescribed as a drug in particular okay. instances in the U.S. But this is also sold as a dietary supplement. Mm -hmm. So uh, the FDA had previously um, uh, made a similar statement for NAC, saying, "Oh, you can't sell this as a dietary supplement because it's uh, it's currently being." sold as a drug but however NAC was um was sold on the market for maybe 40 50 years and it's also a natural compound so it's found in various foods such as NMN for example because trace amounts of NMN you can find in broccoli and in avocado you can't ban yeah. all this all these foods, right? So this sure. doesn't really make sense. So um, I think that, and this is another subject that we can talk on and on about, by the way, because I think there are some political uh, issues there and there are some interests in, in this whole situation. But um, I think that this is, this is a conversation for another day. <laughs>